last two lectures we have seen the, how to solve the hills equation and one of the methods was using the matrices and another method was uh, such a way that we have uh, obtained three optical parameters namely alpha beta and gamma now we will extend our studies on the hills equation and these parameters so let us start now in a synchrotron basically first of all we define a basic cell basic cell means a basic optics which will be repeated many times to make a closer path there may be a variety of basic cells or optics by which the basic cells has been made so we take one example one example like this there is a drift space then there may be a focusing lens focusing lens means horizontally focusing lens then there may be a defocusing lens because we have to focus the beam in vertical plane also then we may have some dipole magnet then another focusing and defocusing magnet in this fashion we can define our basic cell there may be a variety of basic cells so this may be one of the type of basic cell and then these basic cells are repeated many times to make a close path so this is a basic cell and then by repeating we make the complete ring means in a synchrotron the optics is periodic means this period of the optics has been repeated many times so from this starting point and again here it will be the starting point of the next cell means these point are actually having the same environment similarly this point and corresponding to the point in the next cell will have the same one means we have optical periodicity in this synchrotron even if we make synchrotron using only a single basic cell then after one turn particle traverses through the same environment of the optics means after one turn it will traverse through the same optics again and again so even though even there is basic cell equivalent to the length of the circumference of the synchrotron in that case also we have periodicity in the optics in a synchrotron that periodicity means that, that period will have the length equivalent to the circumference of the synchrotron so in synchrotron particle motion takes place in a periodic environment of k means k become the periodic so we can write down k s is equal to k l plus s here l is the length of the period length of the in in accelerator jargon this period is known as super period so length of the super period this length may be a length of the super period or maybe the circumference of the synchrotron even in linear accelerators or transport line some basic cells can be repeated many times to make the complete linear accelerator or transport line in that case this ks will again be periodic so now we will solve hills equation under this condition that when k is periodic if differential equation has a coefficient which is periodic in independent parameter then solution can be written down using the floco theorem what floco theorem says it says that xs which is a solution can be written down as ws e raised to iota phi and this ws will have the same periodicity as of the ks means we will have ws also as ws l s plus l the same theorem you might have studied in 
solid state physics course namely block theorem in which you solved schrodinger equation in the cronin pen model under the periodic potential now in case of our notation we have written down x s is equal to a root beta s cos phi plus pi naught so in this case beta s which is at the place of w s here will be periodic so hill's equation solution can be written down using the periodic condition and then beta s can be written down as beta s plus l alpha s is equal to alpha s plus l and when these two parameters will be periodic definitely the third parameter gamma will also be periodic remember here that this is a particular solution which we have obtained non periodic solution can also exist means if i take some initial arbitrary value of beta and alpha still beta and alpha can be obtained at after some length s s1 or s2 however or unique values of beta alpha which will give you the periodic solution there may be infinitely many solutions in which we have selected one solution which has periodicity in alpha and beta this solution in accelerator jargon is known as matched solution and in accelerators if initial beam is defined using the values of these beta alpha gamma or matched parameters then it will nicely behave in the periodic lattice what does that mean we will see it now in some protons suppose we have chosen one point beta 1 alpha 1 at location s is equal to s1 and another point say this is s is equal to s2 here the values are beta 2 alpha 2 so if we have chosen our solution periodic then this beta alpha 1 and beta 2 alpha 2 are unique in this case means we can write down beta 1 as is equal to beta 1 as plus l here beta 2 is equal to beta 2 as plus l it may be a case here also you that we choose some two arbitrary points s is equal to s1 and s is equal to s2 in some non periodic lattices non periodic lattices may be of the transport line where same cell is not repeated to make the complete optics in that case we cannot have periodic solution of the beta and alpha in in that case of non periodic lattice beta 2 and alpha 2 will depend on the initial values of beta 1 alpha 1 and as we change the initial values of beta 1 alpha 1 we will get another values of beta 2 alpha 2 so in this case beta 2 alpha 2 will not be periodic now how beta and function looks like in a periodic lattice suppose we have a single cell like this this is the basic cell which will be repeated four times because this is making 90 degree angle from final trajectory to initial trajectory means if it will be repeated four times it will make a complete closed loop of 360 degree so this is a basic cell in this basic cell these green elements are the quadrupole magnets and this red element is the dipole magnet so here schematically it is shown in this picture here you can see that focusing quadrupole 
is above the line and defocusing quadrupole is shown below the line. Dipole magnet is showing by a rectangle covering above and below both area on the, around this line. So this is the basic symbols which one uses to show the accelerator optics or charged particle optics. Now you can see here it is a meshed solution means beta and alpha at this point must be equal to beta and alpha at this point. Means here you can say this is the beta s, here you can say this is the beta s plus l, l is the length of this optics or period, then these two betas values must be equal. Here you can see that in black color this is the beta x, it is the value at the starting and it is the value at the end. So these are the same. Similarly, this is the beta y, its value in the start of the optics is this and here it is also this. So this is the matched solution for this optics. Now you can see that as beam size increases, this beta is increasing means beam size is increasing or particles amplitude of beta tone oscillation is increasing means at this location the maximum amplitude of a particle is lower than the, at this location. Now as the quadrupole appears it focuses the beam. So again downstream to this quadrupole the amplitude of beta tone oscillation has been reduced. Here it is a defocusing quadrupole. So downstream to this quadrupole amplitude of beta tone oscillations has been increased and again there is a focusing quadrupole this is a focusing quadrupole so again downstream to this quadrupole amplitude of the beta tone oscillation has been reduced you can see under this particular case of mesh solution at the focusing quadrupole beta has the maximum value Again, at the focusing quadrupole, beta has largest value, local maxima is there. Again, here you can see at the location of quadrupole, local maxima is there. Similar is the case for the vertical beta function also. Here you can say vertical beta function will have local maxima at the location of defocusing quadrupole. Here again you can see defocusing quadrupole is there. So, local maxima of the vertical beta tone function is there. Now, suppose we selected a location S is equal to S0. This is the location. And a particle is revolving in this synchrotron. This is the orbit of the synchrotron. And particle is revolving around this. If particle is having non-vanishing initial condition means x or x prime is non-zero initially then it will exhibit the beta tone oscillations around this orbit. Means this will be like this beta tone oscillations of a particle. Now on E passing through this detector on each turn if we record x and x prime of the particle how the motion will look like. The, the amplitude of beta tone oscillation at this location will depend on the value of beta 1 here and it will make a complete ellipse after many turns and the value and that ellipse or geometry of that ellipse depends on the beta 1, alpha 1 and what are the initial condition we have chosen x and x prime which defines the invariant of the motion A. So, after turn by turn, the recorded position and angle we will see in this movie. Now you can see that after each turn in x and x prime space, there are some coordinates on which particle is coming, and here we are plotting the angle after each turn 
so you can see angle is oscillating like a sinusoidal oscillation and here x is also showing some oscillatory nature which is like the simple harmonic oscillator means here we are drawing the position of the particle here we are drawing the angle of the trajectory of the particle with respect to design trajectory in this plot the a is a square has been plotted so it has a constant value over turn by turn so turn by turn behavior of a particle at a certain location we are looking this behavior at this location at this detector we are recording x and x prime so we are getting the ellipse defined by alpha beta gamma of that point and if we will see only x this will behave like the sinusoidal oscillator simple harmonic oscillator like this and x prime also will be like the simple harmonic oscillation at a certain location keep in mind that we are talking about this kind of oscillatory behavior if we are recording position at a particular location as is equal to s if we record say these parameters at another location say s is equal to s1 then again the value of beta alpha at this location will decide the ellipse so ellipse may have different orientation and different elongation only this a will be constant so area of that ellipse will be same as the area of this ellipse and at that location also if you will see the projected angle or position of from this ellipse they will uh, execute the simple harmonic oscillate oscillations there is a different way for looking this invariant of motion also instead of single particle executing motion and we are recording turn by turn its position and angle we can have different initial conditions in the beginning means we may have part many particles having different sets of x and x prime but these sets are chosen in a way that this leads to same a square means we are choosing the values of x and x prime in such a way that they are producing same a square at a given location say s is equal to s then again we will see that these initial conditions will make an ellipse so how this ellipse will be generated can be seen in two ways both are equivalent one is taking many initial particles many particles with different initial conditions with the same a square or having a single particle and we are recording its position and angle on each turn so in both cases we will have ellipse defined by alpha beta and a square a square is constant and alpha beta is the position dependent so say s is equal to s1 again we are reiterating here that at different location say s is equal to s2 the parameters of that location alpha and beta will be different and those different parameters will give you different ellipse it may be in this orientation also it may be like this perfectly aligned with the axis or this orientation also only the condition is that area of all these ellipses will be the same now suppose if we change only alpha we keep the beta constant beta constant means maximum amplitude of the particle at that location is a constant only we change the alpha and how we change the alpha we switch the sign of alpha here alpha is minus 1 here alpha is plus 1 so you can see that the tilt of this ellipse has been reversed here x x prime and 
this is the major axis and this is the minor axis so here tilt is here and here you can say tilt is from here so tilt is reversed why this is the case because alpha is minus half d beta by ds so as you reverse the sign the d beta by ds has reversed itself now if d beta by ds is positive d beta by ds positive means beta is increasing with length beta is increasing with length means maximum amplitude of beta tone oscillation is increasing as we are going downstream so as we are going downstream and amplitude of beta tone oscillation is increasing means we are talking about a diverging so if d beta by ds is positive so alpha will be negative because alpha is defined as minus of d beta by ds so minus alpha this minus alpha defined at diverging beta. similarly alpha with positive value shows a converging means a focus in this case d beta by ds will be negative means amplitude of beta tone oscillation will decrease as we will go downstream the optics so sign of alpha whether it is positive or negative shows you whether the beam is diverging or converging now if we choose the initial condition differently that the a square of these initial conditions are different means we have set two sets say x1 and x1 prime this is the first set of the initial condition and say this is corresponding to the value of a1 square and which is uh, choose another set of initial conditions say x2 x2 prime and in this case you can say this leads to another invariant of motion say a2 square then how the motion will look like so if we record now position and angle of these two particles on each turn at a certain location s then the above particle or above initial condition will make its own ellipse with certain area defined by a1 square and another ellipse will be defined by this a2 however because we are recording position at a certain location say s is equal to s1 and the optical parameters at that location is same for both the particles say beta alpha so tilt or orientation of the ellipse will be same for both the particles now we will see how the motion is evolved on each turn in this move so in left side you can see that the value of lower a suppose this is the value of a1 invariant of motion and this is value of a2 so particle with a smaller value of invariant of motion will always remain inside the larger value of invariant means two trajectories having different a1 a2 in the phase space will not cross each other while in the right side you have seen that these two vectors which shows instantly instantaneous position and angle of the particle at the location chosen location say s is equal to s1 here the displacement of these two particles can have common value at certain instant during the beta tron oscillations so in real space you can have common x for both the particles at particular time means these trajectories in real space can cross each other if you plot it however in phase space these two particle trajectories will never cross each other suppose in phase space if it cuts suppose this is the first trajectory we are having 
here x and here x prime this is the phase space this is the trajectory say particle 1 and this is the trajectory of the particle 2 if it cuts here see and we choose initial condition of this particle at this coordinate say this coordinate is x1 x1 prime so if we choose the initial conditions as x1 and x1 prime we cannot define whether this is the particle 1 or particle 2 means there is no uniqueness in the solution so this is not possible with any differential equation so these trajectories in phase space cannot cross each other